For me, Anne-Marie, it is only now that I have understood. When I saw that they massacred the people, they also massacred our sisters, because we are with the people. This solidarity is that which causes us to be massacred with the people. Solidarity with the people, to be with the people, means what? If it means dying, we die with them. If it means living, we live with them. Pillage? If they are pillaged, we are pillaged. In any case, our vocation is not easy. It is easy perhaps if there is no war, if there is peace, all is well. But if there is war, to be with the people, it's really, I don't know, a martyrdom, if one can say it like that. The Democratic Republic of Congo, Africa's third largest nation, has a vast potential wealth. With a tropical climate, it is rich in minerals, forests and arable land. The tranquil beauty of the countryside, however, belies the reality of a brutal and ongoing inter-ethnic war that has claimed the lives of over two million and has displaced a further million. The sporadic ebb and flow of this war between Rwanda and Congo has lasted over four years. The tension of conflict resonates as a permanent backdrop to the struggle of daily life. Caught at the epicenter of this convulsion of evil is a small African religious community, a flickering symbol of hope dedicated to serving the weak and forgotten. The Daughters of the Resurrection was founded in 1965 through the inspiration of a Belgium nun, Mother Heidewig. Father Ingram and a Dutch priest, Father Werenfried van Straten, founder of the International Catholic Charity aid to the church in need. The understanding was the need for a community that was not made up of European missionaries, but was rather purely African, a community that could respond closely to poverty because they lived poverty, a community that could educate the poor because they experienced firsthand the consequences of illiteracy, a community that could attend to the medical needs because they too lived in the grinding poverty from which much of the disease develops. At the foundation with Father Verenfried was the intuition that the simple and poor regions of Africa needed sisters who could witness to this milieu. This is exactly what I believe this congregation is doing, with sisters that live a style of life that is extremely simple, close to the people, and particularly engaged in evangelization, 
and also through a human testimony in the medical care and development works that they do. It's firstly a human witness of devotion and simplicity, that is, a witness of the poor Christ among the poor. The congregation has grown rapidly. Today, the Daughters of the Resurrection number over 185 nuns spread out between Congo, Rwanda and Cameroon. The aim of the congregation is to live as a witness to Christ and through the love of Christ to give faith, hope and love to those caught in poverty. They are capable of being the smallest among the small and with complete availability. The devotion, I would say, is a lesson for me. This delicate and smiling openness is a true lesson for us Westerners. Because behind this simplicity is the gift of complete giving of self, which is utterly evangelical and which brings us back to proper attitudes. This, I believe, is one of the graces of this community, utterly unique in this region. We appreciate very much the Daughters of the Resurrection because they are local. They know the mentality of the area. Secondly, they adapt themselves very easily. They are not, should I say, scientific sisters, but they are so humble that they adapt themselves to all the conditions. Even their housing is simple. They are really with the population that suffer. They marry the need, the suffering, the situation of the people. They incarnate the heart of the population. The greatest scourges facing the African population is poverty. 90% of the population live below the poverty line, many on less than one dollar a day. Confronted by the same reality, each religious community must develop a self-sustaining structure. Time is divided between prayer and the daily struggle simply to survive. Each sister shares the burden to enable the smooth running of the house. Self-sufficiency not only enables the daughters to survive, but also, through their knowledge, to teach the local villagers self-development skills. Many sisters have also developed specialized training, ensuring a diversity of skills. For some, this means caring for the livestock. For others, this means tilling the fields with the local villagers who receive a part of the harvest as payment. Mechanical training, although not common for women in Africa, is also essential for community transport. Sister Alphonsine, certified recently in auto mechanics, is responsible for the congregation's vehicles. According to the needs of the congregation, they sent me to a school. I studied at ITFEM, the Institute for Technology in Bukavu, because the congregation needed a mechanic. It is difficult for a woman, but I found that I could do it because it was a need of the congregation. Her classmates, however, were skeptical. In the beginning, there were some reactions, and they thought that I could not succeed, and it was crazy the kind of problems I had at the start. But at the end of the year, I began to get used to it, and, especially as a sister, they were happy to see me, and they were also very proud to have a 